Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It is Monday review time as I look back at the weekend. Yep, you've guessed it. Defeat to High Flying Wigan Athletic. Where the Jules decided to have one of the worst first halves possible. Could have been 5 or 6 nil down, and that's no exaggeration. Before coming out, fighting back to 2 all in the second period. Only to defend like schoolboys again at the end and concede a third. And ultimately lose the game by three goals to two. Just to make it clear, I wasn't at the game, but I have watched extended highlights and flicked through the match rerun on iFollow, so I get an overview of what did happen throughout the 90 minutes in the northwest of England. Team news came out at two o'clock, and there was a change of shape and a change of personnel from Steve Lovell. He'd mentioned during the week that he'd worked on different shapes to counter Wigan Athletics threats, and I thought the 4-2-3-1 was a sensible option. It saw Ben Reeves and Charlie Kelman drop to the substitutes bench. Mustafa Cario and Danny Lloyd both came into the side to give us width in high areas, uh, with Carl Dempsey, Ollie Lee and Stuart O'Keefe making up the midfield trio in support of lone front man of Dane Oliver. The back four and keeper remain from the same from that that started against Burton the week previous. But we were horrendous, absolutely horrendous first half. Pontus Dahlberg's made a really good save at the beginning, um, getting down low to his left-hand side to push one round the post. And then we can see the really soft goal, don't we? They get a throw in on their right-hand side. Uh, it goes into feet. Mustafa Carriol doesn't get tight enough, doesn't affect the play. Gets spin too easily. Robbie McKenzie sort of half ass gets out to the ball. Can he do more to block the cross, potentially? And then Max Amar, he's picking up Will Keane in the six-yard area. He looks like he's set really well initially. He's goal side. Will Keane just wants it more. Moves him out of the way, Max, as if he isn't there and heads it past Dahlberg, who's got absolutely no chance again. It's just weak, weak defending again, unfortunately. Uh, they then hit the bar shortly after Tom Naylor from another set piece or cross from the right hand side. Tom Naylor, who's about six foot four, I think, is being marked by Cole Dempsey. I mean, it's, it's just schoolboy stuff, unfortunately, isn't it? I don't like digging out players and I've tried to back them all season, but it's becoming harder and harder with the errors that I keep seeing us make on a regular basis. So you've got one of our smallest players on the pitch marking one of their tallest players. Luckily for us, it hits the bar and goes out for a goal kick. Shortly after that, Ryan Jackson, really poor pass into the midfield. Wigan pick up possession. Uh, Max Amar comes out. He's very passive. He doesn't do enough to pinch the ball. Even if you take if you take a foul and you get set, he doesn't do either. Uh, he gets spinned. Ball gets played into feet. Robbie McKenzie dangles a foot. He's in the centre of the pitch, way away from his station at left back for some reason. We've got a right back and a centre back high up the pitch. A left back ends up central and the other centre back ends up deep. That's why we're in the situation we're in. It's really, really poor defensively. It's no communication, no nothing. Um, and then it's Stephen Humphreys. Drives into the box. He's going away from goal. Again, Jack Tucker's half arse for me. Doesn't really make any attempt to block the shot. And it goes across Dahlberg into the far corner. And with that, it's 2-0 really quickly again. And we're, we're up against it, chasing the game against a side that, that's now top of the division with games in hand. Um, Ryan Jackson then tries to give him a third. He had one of them afternoons by the look of things. There was a lot of tweets about him on social media. and I can't defend him yesterday. I've tried to a few times, but from what I saw, absolutely shocking. Um, doesn't look. Plays a ball across his own six-yard line that Dahlberg's not aware is going to happen. Luckily for us, and give credit to Max Aimer, he gets back on the line and heads it over. But, but Will Keane should be scoring. He's got pretty much the whole goal to aim at from six, seven yards. But, but credit Aimer there for actually getting his head on the, on the ball and preventing it from being 3-0. There was a change of shape, wasn't there, during the interval. Um, Danny Lloyd and Mustafa Carriol, who I didn't see anything of in terms of an attacking threat in the highlights in that first period, were replaced. And we went back to the team that started last week against Burton. So that was Ben Reeves and Charlie Kelman on. And we went back to the diamond. Credit to us. We, we became a threat. We became a better side. Um, we scored a decent enough goal. Yes, we reverted to... Steve Evans ball, if that's what you want to call it. I know Steve Lovell said that he wanted to try and approach games in a different way, but we would have to mix it up, and we did that. And it's a good clip from Max Amar. For Dane Oliver, peels off to one side, wins his header far too easily from a Wigan point of view, but that's not our problem. Um, the second centre-back gets attracted to V as well, and it leaves Ben Reeves a free run. And from about 20 yards out on the run, first time finish into the bottom corner is a really smart goal. Um, Jill's fans, I think, were behind that goal, suddenly believe a little bit. Um, and we're right back in the contest. Um, then there's more saves, isn't there? We know that, that we're chasing the game and, and we're going to, going to open us up. They opened us up far too easily in the first half. So with us being more open and, and trying, to, trying to grab an equaliser, it was going to happen. 
Pontus Dahlberg's made a couple of good saves again. Carl Dempsey, another one, guilty of giving the ball away. Luckily, Max Amar gets across and blocks it, and then the ball's recycled, and Dahlberg makes another good save. That's his third or his fourth already, and we're not even at, you know, sort of 60 minutes. Um, he then makes an even better stop, the Swede. There's a there's a corner comes in from the Wigan right, left-footed in swinging. I'm not sure it is at the back post, but he shrugs off Max Amar too easily again. And from point-blank range, Dahlberg stands up big and manages to claw the ball off the line and, and away from danger. It's a brilliant, brilliant stop from the Swede. We could have been five or six one down at that point, let's be honest. But credit to us again. Um, we try and make things happen. There's a really smart bit of play. Stuart O'Keefe, little dink ball into the box. And uh, for Dane Oliver, challenges the keeper. It is not a pen for me. The keeper gets there, Ben Amos, before V, and gets a large portion of the ball. Um, I don't know if it was a different view for those fans in the ground, but from the TV highlights, it's never a pen in a million years for me. And then, lo and behold, the equaliser, the hope that that eventually kills you, unfortunately. Um, it's a decent enough ball into the box from Ryan Jackson. I've... I've Dug him out a few times on this video today, but it's a decent enough ball into the mixer for Dane Oliver again causes panic amongst their defence. And when the ball breaks to Stuart O'Keefe, edge of the box, he shows real composure. There's a tendency maybe there to lash at it, but he guides a brilliant left-footed finish through a crowd into the bottom corner. Amos is statuesque in the Wigan goal. And from 2-0 down and absolutely out of the game, it's suddenly 2 each and, and we're in the game and we're looking like we could pick up a point. Um, and then comes the third goal. It's it's hideous defending. It's absolutely horrendous. For a team that's not learned, we've spoken about Tom Naylor having a free header in the first half or being marked by a bloke who's about a foot shorter than him. We've spoken about Max Amar being eased off the ball too easily for the first goal. We've spoken about Max Amar being eased off the ball too easily uh, where Dahlberg digs him out with a brilliant point-blank save in the second half. So we decide after getting back from 2-0 down to 2 each against a side that's probably going to win the league, we just won't mark the fella at the back post. So the corner comes in, there's not a Jill shirt within five, six yards of him and he heads it across goal and Will Keane is a yard out and taps in the winner. I've got nothing else to say. Maybe the Jill's players could come out and explain what they're thinking because there's no leadership. There's no one taking responsibility. I've paused it a few times on, on the highlights footage. Everyone looks marked up. It looks like for Dane Oliver's the one that's, that's spare. So whether he's been told to attack the ball which he doesn't because it sails over his head, or whether he's just decided not to pick up his man. And I'm a huge fan of Big V, and I won't dig him out for the sake of it. But when you're down the bottom and you keep making these same mistakes, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to progress. You're not going to pinch points. You're not going to win games. We're not winning games. And again, we're talking about a game where Steve Lovell said there were positives. Yes, there were. The fight back from 2-0 to 2-all for half hour is brilliant. But it ultimately means diddly because we've lost the game and we've got no points. We've now got 18 from 26 all season and we probably need 32 from the last 20, but over a point and a half a game. It's relegation form. We now have a huge week coming up. We've got three games at home in seven days. If we are to have, I know some of you will be laughing, but I have to do it from both sides. I think we're gone. But if we're to have any chance of staying in this division, we've got to pick up at least two wins from the next three games at home, which is Shrewsbury Tuesday night, Oxford Saturday and Crewe the following Tuesday. Um, will we have a new manager? Will it still be Steve Lovell? No one seems to know. Andy Woodman was nailed on, start of the week, went into three to ten with Bet Victor. There's an interview that's gone around on social media because his Bromley Cyber on BT Sport on Saturday um, and the way he talks indicates that perhaps he's not that keen on taking the Jules job um, and that he's quite happy with the project that he's got going on at Bromley. Can you blame him? Yes, we're two divisions apart, but we're going to be in League 2 next season, barring a minor miracle. And there's a chance that Bromley could be in League 2 next season. They're currently fourth or fifth in National League, playing really well, got a couple of games in hand, I think, over teams around them. So there's a real chance that, that they're going to be pushing for promotion right at the top end of the National League. Um, it says where we are, doesn't it? Unfortunately, as a football club. That a, that a player, that a manager, sorry, who's uh, currently employed two divisions below us, would rather stay where he is. Other names that have been mentioned, we've already said Luke Garrett, uh, the Boar and Wood boss, but he's out of eight to one. Neil Smith, former Jules players, out of twelves. The new bookie's favourite, looking at Bet Victor, is Mark Bircham, who's four to five. Um, his last job was at County Waterford in the Ireland, uh, the League of Ireland, and he left amid a little bit of controversy last November. Um, they would 
I think they were bottom of the league and he managed to get them up the table and, and try to avoid relegation. And they have like a playoff system out there, don't they? Pretty much like the Scottish League do. Um, but he left two or three days, I think it was, before that playoff game. So in differences with the chairman, Mark Bertram then released a statement, I believe, saying that it was because he was refusing to play the owner's son. Um, but one quote I did see from Bertram, which, which hopefully would stand him in good stead if he did took the job, was that he's not a yes man. Um, I think we've had far too many of them recently. Um, those that haven't been yes men um, are when we tended to be more successful. And that, that all links into those that have, have not had any previous affiliation with the club over the last few years. If you look at the best, best seasons we've had, uh, Martin Allen, 2012-13, Justin Edinburgh, 2015-16, and Steve Evans for two seasons prior to this one. Um, so it's something we have to keep an eye on again. Um, but for me, if nothing happens in the next couple of days, then Steve Lovell might as well keep the job for the rest of the season because we're going to bring in a new manager, no transfer window, um, who's effectively going to write relegated on his CV. So for me, the best option would be to, to give it to Lovell until the end of the season and then we reevaluate. Um, there should be more options. You never know if, if, if we go down and Bromley fail to get promoted, Andy Woodman might then see us as a more appealing proposition. You don't know. Um, but at least whatever it does, whoever comes in, would be able to have a clean slate. There's a lot of players out of contract. Are many going to be with us next season? I don't think so. So at least the new man would be able to start afresh in May, June, have a whole summer um, to make the squad his own and rebuild for a campaign that looks like it's going to be in League Two. Right, that is enough from me. Um, apologies that we can't be more positive. Unfortunately, uh, we've not won a game since October, so there's not a lot of positivity to talk about. Um, I think I tweeted yesterday, um, we've hit rock bottom, not just in the table, um, just in general. Um, Managerless, directionless, rudderless, hopeless at the moment, unfortunately. And and people know me that I'm generally one of the most glass half full fans about. But this is the season from hell and we can't dress it up. Anyway, be back Tuesday with Boz for a match day live against Shrewsbury Town, where we will believe for about 15 minutes before kickoff and maybe for a little while when the game starts. Um, I hope Monday hasn't been too stressful for you. I hope you're not getting too much grief in the office or on the building site or wherever you work. Uh, we'll see you soon, but until next time, up the Jills. <laughs>